Today I'm going to compare the main recording and editing software for podcasts so that you can choose the one that's right for you. Let's go. Number one, Audacity. Audacity has been around for decades and it's a free software. It's widely used and it just had a massive upgrade with version 3.2. With this upgrade, Audacity is no longer a destructive editor, which means that the changes you make in your project are not permanent. You can modify and tweak them at uh, any time. We also have a new chain of effect. You can use uh, third-party plugins and they are applied in real time. So as you modify the parameters and the settings, you can hear the changes happening and you can also uh, place one after the other and uh, the interface of the chain of effects is very user-friendly and easy to understand. The waveform is very detailed as you zoom in and it's in its classical form, what you would expect. The interface overall, it's quite outdated, but it's something we can work with. Some of the features inside of the menu are not strictly related to podcast or audio editing. When you download Audacity, you also get some links to some free third-party plugins that you can integrate into the software right away. Number two, Hindenburg. Now, Hindenburg is a software that is specifically designed for human dialogue. So we don't have things about music production or video, it's strictly audio only. This leads to a menu that is very clean and minimal, which helps the learning curve. You also have uh, included some native plugins that are very easy to operate because they usually work with one knobs or they're very simplified and it helps you to get the results you want without having to fight with it too much. How many plugins you have, it depends if you choose the version light of the software or the pro version of the software. Everything considered, the software is still quite niche and it's not as widely used, though I know professional editors that use it, there are some online communities, you can still find tutorials. One of the things I don't like about it is that they chose a type of waveform that is quite unconventional. And if you're used to other editing software, it takes a little bit to get used to it. What I like about it is that it has a flexible pricing model, so you don't have to necessarily get a subscription. You can also purchase the software outright, and the light version of the software is overall affordable. Be careful, though, that in the light version of the software, you do not have multi-track recordings. So if you want to record each speaker on a separate track, you won't be able to do that, which is kind of unacceptable. Number three, Reaper. I know a lot of people like Reaper. It's kind of a jack of all trades because you can edit video with it. You can edit uh, podcasts and audio. You can do some music production stuff. And it's overall quite affordable. The discounted license is just $60. Because Reaper tries to do a little bit of everything, the menus end up being quite cluttered because they have to include a lot of functions. So the learning curve here, it's quite steep. I'm not a fan of the interface and how the effects chain is represented but I really like that you can uh, assign several actions one after the other to a shortcut. So you would basically press a button and three, four actions of your choosing will happen at the same time, which is very time saving when you have to edit uh, an episode and go through repetitive actions. Number four, Adobe Audition. One of the main critique here is the price because it's a subscription model and it's $20.99 a month in the US just for Adobe Audition. You can also find it as part of the Adobe Creative Cloud, which is also why it's so widely used. The software is solely focused on audio editing and it feels very complete with a lot of advanced feature, which is also why it's uh, used by voiceover artists, professionals, podcast editors and podcasters. It comes with a lot of great native plugins. If you're familiar with uh, Adobe products, it's very intuitive and they also integrate seamlessly together. If you and your team are using it and you wanna look for an editor that's using it too, your hiring pool is gonna be much, much bigger. Number five, Pro Tools. Pro Tools is the industry standard audio editing software. It's used in corporate environments, in big studios and in big projects. Because there are a lot of teams and departments working in this project, a standard was created and that standard was Pro Tools. For an independent podcaster, it's still quite expensive. On top of that, complexity is quite high because it is a complete software that is meant to be used by professionals. So there are a lot of features that are useful in uh, movies or sound design or music production, which can make the whole software quite complex for just an independent podcaster. 
It also comes with a lot of uh, native uh, plugins and it's compatible with a lot of hardware developed by Avid, which is the same company that produces the software. Number six, Descript. Descript is a subscription-based model software and the medium price is $12 a month per user. This also can add up, but is more reasonable than Adobe Audition or Pro Tools. The way the software works is quite uh, innovative because you take your audio, you import it into the software, it creates a transcript from it, and you can edit the transcript. And also if you cut some words in a transcript, those words will be removed from your audio too. This made the software very appealing to beginners and really focused on making it as user-friendly as possible. Because the target audience is mainly beginners, the software lacks a lot of uh, advanced features, like for example, running third-party plugins to improve the audio. You get something like the studio sound and other little features inside which do it in a very, very basic and limited way. This script can also edit video and is very good for creating TikToks and shorts in a very easy fashion, though it lacks the more advanced feature as Premiere and Resolve, so the result will be, again, more basic, more simple. You are not able to do a lot of things. I really like that you can uh, integrate an external podcast editor into this script. That's because uh, the whole workflow is happening in the cloud and the files are on the cloud. So you don't have to send files back and forth when you're collaborating with uh, someone. They they have access to the same cloud as you do. They do the changes and the whole cooperation is seamless. If your editing needs change and you want to start to do something a bit more complex, a bit more advanced, you might have to be forced to move to another software. And those software work very differently from this script. So you would have to basically start all over from zero and feeling like you wasted a lot of time. So what you learn in this script, it's not a really transferable skill when it comes to editing, while the other software, though they have some differences, are much more similar to each other. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, like, and stay tuned for more. I'll see you next time.